Welcome, my name is Nick Newton, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up a titanium anodizing station at home that is basic, cost-effective, and actually gives you some quality results, and it's gonna impress all your friends and family. You're gonna find the love of your life. You're gonna be the talk of the town. Let's get right into it. First, you're gonna need some titanium, something that you wanna anodize. I find that a, a sanded or a polished finish gives a little bit better of a result. You can get those really low voltage colors, uh, like pastel kind of hues to it. Um, and then you can really ramp up your voltage and get those nice deep vibrant blues and purples. If you use a like sandblasted finish, you typically get kind of a matte sort of patina to it. Uh, you can still get the nice vibrant colors, but they usually don't stick as well in, in my opinion. And uh, it, it's a little bit more finicky to try to get those colors to pop. So I prefer just a basic sanded. I just do a line grain on some sandpaper, you know, come back with some Scotch-Brite, make it kind of smooth and sort of shiny. And I think that that gives me the best uh, look so far. After you figured out what piece you're gonna anodize, the next thing that you're gonna need to do is acquire some chemicals. So the first one, the first station is a acid etch. So we're actually gonna put the titanium into a little acid bath. It's gonna etch it, take off any impurities and get it ready to receive an anodizing treatment. So this is the most popular uh, home remedy type situation for the acid etching. It's called Wink rust and stain remover. It's basically just a hydrofluoric acid with some other stuff in there that you're supposed to clean your sinks and stuff with, but it actually works really well for this application. I just don't recommend that you drink it and it actually smells like the bathroom after Thanksgiving day. I'm just saying it stinks. Now, the next thing that you're gonna need is the actual anodizing tank setup. So you can use a few different things with this. Uh, basically, we're just gonna make an electrolytic, electrolytic. So basically, we're just gonna make a bath and electricity is gonna flow through the bath, flow through the part and out. So when you're using, or when you're making up the bath, you can use baking soda that you can find at your grocery store, a couple bucks, be off and running, anodizing like crazy. The next thing that you could use if you're uh, feeling sophisticated is some trisodium phosphate. And this is basically just like a heavy duty cleaner. Uh, this actually, I think works a little bit better than the baking soda. And it also sounds cool and it makes you sound like you're really smart when you say trisodium phosphate. The final step is gonna be the sealing of it. And that is just using some good old blue juice, some basic Windex or glass cleaner. It's, it's pretty much the ammonia that seals everything up. Other supplies that you're gonna need are some titanium wire so that you can hang on to your part. I don't recommend just sticking your fingers in there and electrocuting yourself. You can if you want to, but that is on you. Some people are into some different things. You are going to need some source of power and it needs to be a DC power supply. So you don't wanna just go plug some wires into your wall outlet at home and zap it with 120 volts. Uh, it's AC power and you're probably going to hurt yourself and people are gonna question your sanity. So you need a DC power supply. So if you don't have uh, the desire to own a power supply, you can use a trickle charger. I know you have to use the older trickle chargers because there's, it's a battery charger, um, because there's like a voltage regulator in there that won't allow you to actually zap over a certain amperage or something. I've never personally done it, but that's just kind of what I've heard and what I've witnessed. You can do that if you got it. Uh, the other thing that people will use is the nine volt square little batteries, and you can just link those up in series. Uh, so obviously you're kind of limited to the range of the voltages. You can do nine volts or 18, et cetera, et cetera. And and uh, basically just kind of, uh, you know, take a shot in the dark and then see what comes out. Totally cool, you might actually get something really good. I personally decided to just invest into a power supply uh, because I think tools are awesome and I have a problem and I overbuy all kinds of tools like a lot of people do. Um, but anyway, so I ended up with this really cool power supply. It was like 150 bucks. Um, it's a 120 volt, one amp power supply. You don't need a whole lot of amperage to do this anodizing setup. You just need the volt range. And it's actually nicer to have that higher level of volts because I feel like the colors are more vibrant and I can actually do this process really, really quick. This other power supply I have out here just to show you guys is a zero to 30 volt, but it's a 10 amp, which is a little bit more common in like aluminum, an aluminum anodizing. Um, you need the amperage to get through that little uh, resistive layer that builds up when the anodize grows. So you need the punch of the volt, you don't need the high volt. This one, you need the high volt and you don't need much of a punch because titanium's already conductive as it is. The only other things that you're going to need as far as the hardware goes are some like dishes, some Tupperware, and uh, something like, you know, like this. You'll probably need six of them. You're gonna have the three main stations, the acid etch, the anodize, and the sealant at the very end. And then you just have a rinse 
uh, station that goes with each one. You don't really want to use one bowl to rinse everything. It'll become contaminated very quickly and you'll start moving chemicals from one process over to the next and it'll just it'll just be really bad and you're not going to have really good results. Some things to look for if you do have contamination is if your part looks blotchy for whatever reason or it has kind of like some phase and it's not like a solid even color it's probably because your surface prep was bad or you have con contamination going from one container to the next container. So these are just some normal Tupperware. Um, you can go steal them from your kitchen. Uh, you can go sweet talk your significant other or if you're like me just do it and apologize for it later. The only other thing that you're going to need is like some type of cathode. So on this one, I already have these, these already um, pre-mixed so I could save time. A real easy and cheap thing to do is just grab an old spoon and bend it so you just hang it over the edge of the, the dish and it uh, sits in there. If you wanna be super fancy, you could get some graphite and machine that out so that it is more professional and you know, just basically gives you bragging rights. It really doesn't change anything else. And so that's about, that's about it as far as the hardware goes. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through each station, each uh, little part of it, and show you actually how it works. And it's actually really, really simple and really fast. This is not complicated. Don't be afraid to do it. Take risks, step up, man up, or girl up, or whatever it is, and do this and anodize some titanium. You're going to love it. It's actually a lot of fun. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have our wink. And I like to keep some of it in a little Tupperware bowl just so it's uh, easily accessible and I'm not like pouring things back into the bottle. Um, I just have some that I just use until it's really, you know, basically worthless and then I just toss it out and put some fresh stuff in. And what else I also do is lose my shit. Where is my piece at? You know, as much as you try to be prepared for these videos, it's like you always forget something. Ah, I found it, it's right next to me. I actually have done this video a few times, and uh, so I have a part that's anodized. Voila! During the anodized process, you will you will see that um, sometimes you're not going to get the ideal results, and if you don't, and uh, you just need to start over, just throw it in the acid solution, and then start over until you get the result you want. So I have the acid bath, and then I have the rinse. So any of the water that you're going to be using in this is going to be DI water, the deionized water. Um, it's very important because all of the minerals and chemicals inside the water have been removed. So you have it in its actual purest form. And that also helps control any type of contamination and uh, variables going from process to process. If you want to get real specific with it and real critical, you can get yourself a TDS meter, which is a total dissolved solid, and you can check your DI water and it should have zero PPM or parts per million. That's really all there is to it. The cleaner, the better. So I'm going to take my little uh, piece here, my little titanium clip that I made. So what I'm anodizing, I'll show you guys what I'm anodizing. So I made this little clip thing because I didn't want to buy one. So I made a magazine clip for my nine millimeter and it's just a couple magnets goes on there. And then I have this really nice, cool titanium clip that we're anodizing. Um, after I've anodized it, I went back and I used a fiber laser and engraved a pattern in. It's pretty cool. I know there's a company out there that already makes these, but I just feel like mine's better. Just saying it's, it is. Uh, so that's what we're anodizing is this little clip right here. Um, and I have some test pieces over here, so no big deal. They're kind of my little dummies, my little setup pieces. Just to just to kind of pause for a moment, there's actually no specification for the type of anodize that we're doing right now. So there's actually an AMS spec. So it's AMS 2488D for type two anodize, which is basically like aerospace and medical grade. It puts a durable finish for like lubricity and like, you know, whatever corrosion and stuff like that, but it doesn't change the color. It just stays like a silver color. So this type three that we're doing is actually to alter the color and there is no specification for it. So if you're gonna do a batch of parts or something you're gonna do repeatedly, then make sure that you're taking detailed notes because your thoroughness is gonna be what dictates how consistent um, your finish is gonna be from part to part. So I would just throw that out there. So this isn't an exact science and there is no exact science to it. So let's do this. I'm gonna take my little, my little part here. I'm gonna throw it into my little, uh, my little acid bath. And what you'll find is once you put it in there, it's gonna take a couple seconds for it to start eating away that oxidized layer from the previous anodize. 
and then it starts bubbling aggressively and you'll see it change from a light silver to a dark silver. Once it starts bubbling, I just shake it and I won't leave it in there for like more than like five or 10 seconds. It's really all you need. And then I just get it into the rinse quickly. Uh, I don't like to take my time going from the rinse or from the acid to the rinse because there's gonna be acid on there. And if you have a thin part, that acid is gonna pull up to one area and will actually start etching it faster than another area. And you'll likely end up with a little bit of spotting whenever you do the titanium, um, the anodizing part of it. So <clears throat> that was really it. It took like three seconds, you can see. Now that we've got that part, you don't have to leave it in the rinse for any duration of time, just rinse it off and make sure it's clean. But that's basically all you're gonna do for that portion of it. I'm just gonna set that aside so that I can pull up my actual anodized bath. So this is just DI water and I went ahead and used the uh, tri-sodium phosphate because I want to sound scientific and cool and impress everybody. It really doesn't matter. I think the results are pretty similar between the baking soda and the TSP. And you can also use borax, I'm pretty sure. I haven't actually personally tried that one, but that's just word on the street. So as far as the amount that you put in, I just fill up the container with water enough to cover my part. And then I start adding in the, uh, the powder, either the baking soda or the trisodium phosphate until it all dissolves and the water can't really absorb anymore. So you really want this heavily saturated. And the way you can tell is because there will be like granules at the bottom of the container and you know, okay, the water has pulled in as much as it can pull in. Um, for like two cups, I think I use maybe like five or six tablespoons of uh, the powder. And that was about the point where it couldn't really take anything else. It's gonna be different when you do it because you're gonna use a different amount of water than I used. Um, so it's just something to expect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little fancy clip and I'm just gonna put it into my container. Um, I have it attached to some titanium wire. Um, one of the things that I do to attach the part is I'll actually take the titanium wire and I'll make a little loop at the end. So it's kind of like a little spring. And if I have a through hole like on this part, then I just compress that little spring, slide it in, let it open up, and it holds it in place pretty secure. Uh, you really wanna pay attention to your electrical connections doing this. Uh, if it's like slips or it's dangly or something like that, your part is A, gonna fall off and you're not gonna have any way of getting it out besides sticking your hand in there. Um, if that's the case, it's not very deep, you'll be, you'll be fine, I'm sure. Just go wash yourself up after that. But you really want that strong contact so the current flows through. That's basically it as far as the rigging. You also wanna make sure that the part actually never contacts whatever you're using as a cathode. So you want the part completely separated and it's only fluid contacting the part and the uh, cathode. The cathode is negative or ground and then our part is gonna be positive. So before I hook this up, I'm just gonna throw on my power supply over here. And the way that I do this, it's at 80 volts, but the way that I do this is I basically just hook it up, I'll turn the power supply on, and then you can actually see the part changing through the color spectrum. So as soon as I see the color that I want, so I'm gonna go for like a blue, uh, I just basically kill the power supply and it happens really quick. It's like kind of like whack-a-mole, you know, sometimes you're gonna get it, sometimes you don't, I don't know. You could probably dial this in and get it a lot closer than I do. But uh, for me, this is just fun little projects. This isn't like a, a military specification and I'm not doing anything precise and this isn't a service that I offer. It's just kind of to have fun and uh, play with a little bit. I'm just gonna zap it real quick and I'll show you how fast this actually happens. So I'll turn it on, I can see it's there. Now it's blue, it's like a bluish purple. So from here, I'm gonna get my uh, other cup of rinse water and just throw it in there. Now at this point, you're pretty much there. Um, you just do this until you get the, the color you want, you know, etch it in the acid and uh, repeat until you get that, that vibrant, awesome color. After you're done, you just throw it in the Windex for a couple minutes, let it seal up and uh, rinse it again. And then that's basically it. It's really quick, it's really simple, and it actually looks pretty cool. A couple other fun things to do uh, would be to mask some stuff off. Like you can take some nail polish and like splatter it, you know, if you want to, if you're feeling artistic or whatever. And uh, then you can anodize it and then take some nail polish remover, take off the nail polish and then anodize it again. And then you'll get like a two tone effect. Um, you want to be careful. Uh, there's like a, I f there's like a time and volt equation that goes into this. And now uh, there's not an actual equation, but these are the two factors that I've seen. So you can't leave it in the anodized solution for too long because it reaches a point that you can't anodize it anymore. And you basically just start burning it and then you lose your vibrant colors. So 
mess with it and you know whatever see what see what you come up with see what you like see what suits your fancy thanks for watching i hope you guys learned something from this video do me a favor hit the thumbs up comment below any kind of suggestions for future videos hit the subscribe button and and i will see you next time peace